Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Now let's start with this baby angels. I think you all know this baby. See the chubby cheeks and upwardly tilted eyeballs. They are called cherubs or commonly known as cupids. Baby angels with little wings who use bows and arrows to cause people to fall in love. The Roman god of love and perhaps the most famous of all Valentine symbols. Okay, before getting too much romantic, let's come to the discussion. The name cherubism was applied to this condition because of the facial appearance is similar to that of plumchick little angels depicted in the Renaissance paintings. Cherubism is an autosomal dominant benign fibrosis lesion which cause a progressive painless symmetrical expansion of the jaws. It was first reported in 1993 by Jones who described a family in which three of five siblings were affected by bilateral cystic jaw lesions which is associated with fullness of the cheeks and cervical lymphadenopathy and an upward cast of the eyes with exposure of the rim of the lower sclera. The term cherubism also coined by him. There are some other names also like familial fibrous dysplasia of jaws, disseminated juvenile fibrous dysplasia, familial multilocular cystic disease of jaws and familial fibrous swelling of jaws. But here I would like to mention that fibrous dysplasia term should be avoided because it has no relationship to fibrous dysplasia of bone. Let's discuss some points about genetics. Till now more than 300 cases has been reported in the literature. It is shown that 80% cases there is gain of function mutation in the SH3 BP2 gene on chromosome number 4 P16.3. It is an autosomal dominant condition. In some cases, there is no family history. Do you know what does it mean by 4P16.3? Okay, let's discuss a little about gene mapping. Here is the functional unit of chromosome, also called chromatid. It has two arms. Short arm is also known as P arm, and long arm is known as Q arm. After gemin sustaining, some separate areas are visible under the electron microscope. They are called bands. Numbering starts just adjacent to centromere. Here I have shown three bands. Now every band can be divided into more parts. They are called subbands. So the very first number depicts the chromosome number. And P stands for short term and the number before the point is the band number and the number after the point is the subband number. So the exact location of the gene is on the short arm of chromosome number 4 on the 16th band and 3rd subband area. Now let's discuss about the clinical features. If we put the age and jaw enlargement on a graph, it would be like that. Affected children are normal at birth and are without clinical or radiographically evident diseases until 14 months to 3 years of age. That time the graph will be horizontal and it slows down when the patient reaches 5 years and then stops by the age of 12 to 15 years. At puberty the lesion begins to regress. Here I would like to mention an important point that the earlier the lesion appears, the more rapidly it progresses. The signs and symptoms depend on the severity of the condition and range from clinically and radiographically undetectable features to grossly deformed maxilla and mandible, uh, sometimes respiratory obstruction which can lead to obstructive sleep apnea and sometimes impairment of vision and impairment of Hearing. Now some jaw lesions. It is primarily a jaw lesion. Mandible is most commonly affected than maxilla. The jaw lesions are usually bilaterally symmetrical. It is painless, 
farm to palpation and non tender the most commonly affected area are molar and coronoid region and one important point is condyles always being spared it is often associated with the cervical lymphadenopathy which contributes to the full faced appearance it is produced by the reticular endothelial hyperplasia with fibrosis lymph nodes become enlarged before patient reach 6 years of age and it decreases in size after the age of 8 years and rarely enlarges after the age of 12 years in severe cases involvement of the inferior and lateral orbital walls may tilt the eyeballs upward and retract the lower eyelid thereby exposing the sclera below the iris to produce a typical eye to heaven appearance and some dental abnormalities like agenesis of second and third molar of mandible displacement of teeth premature exfoliation of primary teeth mostly within 3 years of age and uh, delayed eruption of permanent teeth transposition and sometimes rotation and very rarely resorption of the roots maxillary lesions usually start in the tuberosity and involve the maxillary alveolar processes resulting in a development of a narrow v-shaped palate in 1978 arnott gave a grading system according to him grade 1 is when both mandibular ascending rami are involved and grade 2 is grade 1 plus when both maxillary tuberosities are involved and in grade 3 whole maxilla and mandible are involved except the coronoid process and condyles and in grade 4 which is the same as grade 3 with involvement of the orbits which causing orbital compression now some conditions which are associated with cherubism like nunan syndrome gingival fibromatosis psychomotor retardation orbital involvement and obstructive sleep apnea that's all for today in the next section i'm going to discuss about the pathophysiology radiology histopathology differential diagnosis and management thank you guys please don't forget to subscribe have a nice day